In this video, I'll show you how to use the free form report in Google Analytics 4. <laughs> Hello data people, my name is Robert and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. Let's head to the explorations menu in GA4. Now to see the free form report, you need to come here in the left menu and click on explore and then basically this is the page you'll see. I find the explorations uh, reports the most powerful feature of GA4 just because you're able to create your own reports the way you want it with data you want. You just get more control over it. To create a free form, we're just going to click on this one, but I also like funnel explorations and path explorations, but I'm going to cover those in, in another tutorial. So let's click on free form and free form report is divided in three sections. You have the variables, you have the settings here, and you have the output. This is where you're going to see your data. So let's start with variables. And if we go from top, you obviously can set the dates from here. You could say, hey, I want to see the last 30 days. So these are the presets, or you could also manually select some dates. Well, let's say 30 days from here, click on apply. And now I would see the data for the 30 days. Then you have three sections. You have the segments, dimensions, and then you have the metrics. Now segments are just, you know, uh, you segment your users by certain criteria. For example, people that came on mobile device, you want to just see them in the report or something like that. You want to segment by mobile device. Then you have dimensions and dimensions are basically attributes about the user, like country, landing page title, device type, and so on. Whereas metrics, metrics are something that you can count. So that's sessions, purchases, page views, and so on. So let's take a look. I'm going to come to segments in a second, but let's first remove some of these um, that we have already. This data, I don't need it, so I'm going to just remove it. Let's have it a clean table. I'm going to remove all of them. Don't want any of it. There you go. It's now completely clean. First of all, here, dimensions. If you don't see your dimension here, you need to import it. So you click here on plus, and now you can import it. So for example, I don't need gender, uh, so I'm going to just remove it while I'm here. And let's say I look for a landing page from here. I use this one quite often, so I'm just going to choose it, landing page and import. And now you can see it appears here. I'll just delete the ones that you don't use here, like city, I'm not going to use user medium, nope, country, but these two, I'll just leave it. So now I have three here and same thing with metrics. I have three metrics here and I can add more metrics uh, if I click on this plus and now I can search for things. So let's say I want to see sessions. I like to use the search bar because I know what I'm looking for. So from here, I would choose, let's say sessions and session conversion rate. I, that, that's pretty useful. Just keep in mind that some dimensions and metrics are just not compatible. You cannot display them in the same view. Now, if you don't want to know exactly what you're looking for, you can just don't use the search and then you can just go through this, but there's quite a lot of them. So that's why once you learn most of the metrics, I would just use from here. So let's add those two in. I'm going to import it. And now you can see those two are added here. I'm just going to remove the active users. I don't think I'm going to need it. By the way, data is not created equal and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I've created the cheat sheet, which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. You can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. Then I forgot to mention that you can also click on undo or redo from here and share the report. Now, the sharing is not that good, I would say, because you can share a report, but the user will just view this report and they would need to create their own copy. And then if you have the rights, you can also, uh, you have additional editing rights from uh, somewhere here. It's a little pen icon. Okay, now it's time to populate the, 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 the table here. So anytime I want to add anything to, to this table, I, I can just drag it. Let's say landing page. I'm going to just drag this to row. And now you don't see anything because I don't have any dimensions. But sometimes the dragging doesn't work that well for me at least. So what I like to do, I just double click on this and then it adds it there as well. Then let's add here a metric into the values. So let's say I want to see sessions. So I'm dragging now, but I can also double click here and it will just add it. You can see here, they're both added there. And now you start seeing data here. This is great. Okay, but now if you look at the data, it kind of looks weird. Well, we have not set and this kind of data. It just, it's weird. But it's probably because it's uh, right now sorting it by transactions. If you click on sessions, you start seeing a bit more useful data here. And you see, you, you might see some weird data here, but I'm going to fix it in a second. Let's first take a look what else you can do here. So here on the left, you could change the visualization type. To be honest, I use table like 95% of uh, times. We could also change from here, like GeoMap, Donut Chart, Line Chart, and so on. Next, you would add a segment. So let's create a segment quickly. We kind of skipped that one. So if I click here on segment, we can create a segment. 
So let's say we're going to look at people that came on mobile device. So from here, I would choose now session segment, and then we can take a look from here. Device category here, I have category. And then if I add a filter, I could say contains, and here I can choose mobile, or I could say matches exactly, and then mobile apply. And from here, you can see, you kind of estimate how much traffic this covers. So let's give it a name and save and apply. Now you see here, this is the one that I just created, mobile user. I could just now drop this one into the segment comparison. You can see it's already there. Now uh, here, you can see that I can compare mobile users to all of the users. You could also add more segments here if you want to, and that way you can compare them side by side. Let's remove this one for now. I just want to show you that it's possible. Then if we scroll down, we have the start row. I'm going to show you how that, to use that in a second. But for example, here, you have only 10 results. That's kind of little. So let's choose 50 from here. And now you can see that it's updated. We have now the top 50 landing pages based on sessions. And now this will make more sense. So because right now GA4 doesn't have any type of pagination here. So what you can do, you come here and you say, I want to start from 51st row. Yeah. So now we see that it starts with 51st, and that means it goes from 51st and so on. This is how you can see the sort of second page of your report. Now, if that's really inconvenient and you use this report often, you could set up here tabs. So you could say like page one here, page two, and just, you know, set this up to start from the row you want to see base. I'm going to go back to number one because that makes more sense. And sometimes you want to also nest those rows. Here, if I show you example, let's see if this one is a good one. No, it, it doesn't really nest them because we don't have enough data. But what if I would add another here, let's say device category to the row, and now the nested will make more sense. Let's say, where is it? Did it add it? Let me double click. There you go, device category. And now you see that it nests not set, or let's say this home page. Now you can see in desktop, mobile, tablet, and smart TV. If I disable nested, you'll notice it'll just say, okay, desktop this much, mobile. So it goes by the sessions. It's sorting this data by sessions instead of kind of combining it. It's just a bit harder to compare when you, you're not using the nested rows. Another way you can use this, you have here columns. So right now we have two dimensions here. But instead, what you could do is also add it here. Let me add it to columns. I don't know if this will work. Nothing happened here, but let me adjust this one. Maybe it will start working. There you go. Now we have desktop and then you have your data here. Then we have mobile and tablet. Now, obviously, this is not an easy way to read this report like this. So I would definitely be you know, cautious using this. It just gets a bit too tricky, but that's a possibility. Let's remove that device category from columns and let's scroll down. And here you have cell type, bar chart, plain text. And what this means is this little bar chart, this blue line represents how much, you know, how much sessions we have here. So this is kind of maximum. Then you have the homepage here. But if I change to plain text, you won't see that. So it's a bit more cleaner that way. Or you could also use heat map where the color kind of tells you, okay, the darker it gets, the better it is. So in this case, for example, the conversion rate on homepage is a bit less than on this specific page. And this would be telling me that, okay, not set, not going to count it, but some of these pages have, you know, here, there you go. This page has pretty bad conversion rate compared to these, and it's just easy to spot. Now, to be honest, I usually use the plain text just to keep it super clean. And by the way, this is something I cover more in depth in my GA4 e-commerce course. And I really focus on the analysis and getting insights from the data, leaving out all the techie stuff to, to other courses. For more information, just check the link in the description. And then you can also use filters. And we, let's use a filter right now because I actually need it. We have way too much data here that I think is just not showing us the correct stuff. So what we can do? Well, for filters, what I want to see is I click on filter here. I can only filter by dimensions that are already here or metrics that are uh, here. So I can say, say, okay, event name. I want to filter by event name. And in this case, if it contains, and I'm going to choose page view and apply. Now let's see if it does anything. 
there you go. The table is much more cleaner now just because you're basically filtering out the events that didn't contain the page view. And page view is basically, yeah, you see that page. And for landing page report, that's pretty important because you might have other uh, other events firing on, on this and they might have the variable of a landing page, but it's not useful for this report. So you'll be using the filters quite often. Something to keep in mind. If your data looks weird, you might just need to um, filter it by the event name. Now, what's weird here is because I filtered it by page view, I don't see com uh, the conversion rate anymore. So that's not good, right? So what we can do is come here and we can say match regects, rejects. I don't know how to pronounce this, but all you have to do is say page view and then you just type pipe sign and purchase. And the pipe sign just means or. So in this case, it's page view or purchase. So if one of them shows up, then it's going to be part of this report. This way, we're going to only look at these two events, page view and purchase. Let's see if that works. Yep, there you go. We have session conversion rate here. And now the conversion rate actually looks a bit better because before it was 84%, 90%. That's just not possible from an e-commerce shop. The reason we had such a uh, high conversion rate before is because it was taking into account all the conversions because in GA4, uh, purchase is not the only conversion rate, uh, conversion metric you might have. Uh, you have it in settings. You can set it to be any event can be a conversion. But right now, we're only looking at purchase and page view events. So now... If there's a conversion, it's only the purchase uh, event. Then sometimes you want to create more than one tab. So you can just create here and you choose what type of report. So let's say it's free form report and it just starts from scratch here. You can just add again your details here. Now, sometimes you want to just rename this. Let's say this is the landing page report. Or I'm just going to say landing page. Obviously, it's a report. All right. Now you know how to use free form report. But what if an AI could do the analysis for you? Well, in this video right here, I'll show you how to upload a file. And then the AI will just give you insights from your data.